In this video, we're going to be attempting to create a responsive header component. So just to clarify, what's the goal of this video? Similar to the previous episode of designing a website in Figma, we're going to want to take an existing component and prepare a responsive version. So similar to how this component can now be used for mobile, I want to make sure that this header that we have here is going to shrink to a version where there's just the logo and then a hamburger menu icon. So let's get started and find out if that's possible with the new Figma features and try to make this work as smoothly as possible. So let's just find out together and let's get started. So here's what I plan on doing. When you shrink this header below the size where all these would fit next to each other, right? So let me show you what I mean. Uh, what I want to do here is that when we shrink this to about this size, that's where the logo is going to start to collide with these buttons. That's where I want to make sure it switches over to a version that basically is going to look like something like this, right? So below a certain size, we're going to try and make this switch over to this version. Um, also good to mention that we're going to be using three features of Figma, so everybody should be able to do this if it's possible. So let's let's get started. I have this theory where we could utilize the wrap auto layout. So let me detach this and create a component from this again. So we have a duplicate component and I'm going to rename this to header underscore responsive. And what I plan on doing is basically somehow uh, prepare a second version of the logo where there's going to be the hamburger menu that's going to be about right here and it's going to be within this component right and what i plan on doing is somehow define a situation where if we reach a certain size where if we reach a certain size there's going to be some transparent elements above this, right? So all of this is going to be hidden within one component. When it meets a certain size, then these two objects are going to be stacked below each other, which is in turn going to push this downwards, right? Push this downwards, which should then push all of this downwards as well. So what I think could work theoretically is having this auto layout where most of the auto layout is going to be hidden. However, when you actually resize it to a certain point, then um, it's going to be kind of internally moved around so that a different part of this shows. So why don't we try and do that? I'm going to probably just create another version on the side here. I'm going to press command option B to detach this. Let's just call this header responsive experiment and let's figure this out. So um, Right, what's going to have to happen is that, as I said, we're going to have to do this. Let me create a frame as a placeholder for our hamburger menu icon. Then we're going to have the logo and it's going to be, as we said, above this desktop version. So let me select this shift A to create an auto layout aligned to left center. And then what I'm going to do is basically call this header contents mobile, right? And I'm going to set the spacing to auto so that this space right here is going to be automatically calculated based on what size is the parent element, right? Simple enough. So this is what we have so far. So this is already a vertical auto layout. Let me press this command X, select this and then command V uh, so that we have this above the original, right? And then let me go to fill container on this header contents mobile this should be renamed to header contents desktop, right? So header contents desktop. And also at the same time, this is going to have to be set to max width. And the max width, we're going to apply a variable and the width is going to be 12, 12 columns, right? So as you can see, when we resize this, we get a behavior where this adjusts its size. However, the desktop auto layout is not reacting to this in any way. So that's the first step that I think we're going to have to take. We basically duplicated this and now we need to figure out how to show only one at a time. So let's say that the height of this is going to be 60 points at all times. So let me go to fixed height on the overall auto layout, 
right? That's going to be fixed height. And that is going to be 60 because I don't think we have a variable for that. And then this is going to have to be in the center because obviously if we clip the content, then this is going to be shown and that is not really useful. So we're going to have to, let me just disable this and make sure it's centered. But then here's the challenging part that I'm not sure is going to work. We're going to have to add some elements into this layout, probably above all of these. I don't know. Uh, that will be basically two elements, shift A and then horizontal, uh, fill container, right? So this is an auto layout with two rectangles. Then the auto layout itself is fill container as well. And then basically what I want to do is somehow use these to move to push the contents outside of the header. So how do we, how could we actually do this? First of all, let me set the spacing to zero so that there is no spacing between the desktop version, the mobile version, and then the these, uh, let's call these things that push the content down, right? I can't think of any better description for these. Uh, so we got a header responsive experiment auto layout within which you get header contents mobile, header contents desktop, and then things that push the content down. So these rectangles are gonna have a minimum width, and I think the minimum width could be five columns, right? So let me apply minimum width in terms of variables. And that's going to be five, 466. That's the minimum. So when we resize this, uh, these rectangles are going to refuse to be scaled down below the five column width. We might have to uh, adjust this specific value later, but let's just start here. Okay. Additionally, the things that push the content down or layout is going to be wrapped. So when we actually do this, right, as you can see, when we resize this, these stack below each other and you can see that it's be beginning to push the content down. So that's exactly what we need. When it's at desktop size, these two stay next to each other, but then thanks to minimum width, right? This auto layout is going to stack these rectangles below each other. And that means pushing the content down, which ultimately means that we're going to be able to see the desired version of this header. So yeah, now we just need to figure out the values, I think. Okay, so I think we are going to have to add a bottom padding. And this bottom padding will probably have to be 60 points. Right now, let me let me do that 60 points or actually 120 perhaps. Now, here comes the fun part. So as you can see, we added a bottom padding. All this is centered, right? So now when we resize this, actually, these two be begin to stack below each other and it's going to push the content, but not quite to the value that we need, right? So you can see it's switching kind of when we clip co the content but not not really right not really so what could be done about this and as usual i can't believe i didn't get this idea earlier but of course it's gonna have to be adding a vertical gap between rows on this element right so things that push the content down here we're gonna have to add a 60 which means that when this line breaks essentially there's gonna be extra space added on top of the total sum of heights of these two elements, which uh, is 60. So now when I do this, now when I do this, boom, it immediately creates basically an additional rectangle right here, thanks to this vertical gap. So this means effectively that when we resize this below a certain threshold, this gets pushed immediately into this visible area when we clip the content which means that this is the behavior that we got. So as you can see, you can do this simple trick uh, without using any paid features with this new uh, responsive layout. I'm not sure if this is even possible with like conditional variables. I don't know, it's possible that it is. But uh, if you're working just with free features, which is kind of my goal and a challenge to try and do this, uh, this is the, the way to go. So now we just need to do two things. We need to select the header contents desktop and set that to fill container. And then again, set a maximum width, which is going to be uh, 12 columns, right? 12. And then let's set, let's see where we actually need to start stacking this into a, a mobile layout. So I think that could be 
let me add let me add spacing medium on the left and on the right side of this so spacing medium so now that we resize this there's actually some space on the left and on the right side uh, i think we're probably gonna have to go for a bit smaller value so why don't we try 16 which would mean going to local variables and adding a new primitive so that would be a number and it would be primitive slash s and that would be 16 and then under spacing we could do a number that would be small and it would be tied to primitives s so spacing small uh, so let me select this again and go to variables and then spacing small and on the left side, spacing small as well, so that we get this, right? And we need to figure out the value for these two rectangles. So when we resize this, I believe that the moment that we want to uh, start breaking this is when we get below, uh, let's say, five points distance between these two elements which is three less than now. So one, two, three, that's when this whole thing is 1060, which means that when these two rectangles are below 509, 509, so let's just remove min and max and add a minimum width, it's gonna be 509, then it's gonna start breaking. Okay, so let's try that, let's try that, boom. Right, so this is the moment where we wanna start switching over to tablet or mobile version, right? So we get this, beautiful. And now what we need to do is actually create the hamburger icon. So why don't I just create a random three lines? This is just gonna be basically the absolute last detail. So let me select this command X, select this frame, command V, group this and then center that. So this means that I can now turn off the fill and also it means that I'm able to now clip the content on this and see what we actually created. So this is when we have a desktop version, right? Simple enough. And then when we begin to scale this down, it's going to switch over automatically to a version where we get this hamburger menu all the way to here, right? So it's a fully responsive layout uh, in terms of uh, the content changing. And the next step would obviously be, for example, adding like an overlay when you actually click this. So maybe we're gonna do that in the upcoming episode of designing a website in Figma. Let me delete this header responsive and then go here, turn this into a component and actually make this header underscore responsive. We can just use an instance of this. We can use one for desktop, then one for tablet, and then finally one for mobile. And when we make up our mind, we can revert back and it's automatically being updated according to the size. Right, so super flexible, a super simple hack that you can use on your websites. If you found this video useful, I would appreciate you leaving a like. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next episode of designing a website in Figma.